Oh boy, good morning. It is the Lord's gathering. Yes, it is another Lord's gathering. <laughs> okay, yeah, I am a clown. Just got to know me. Uh, it is uh, September the 7th, the first Saturday of the ninth month of 2024. Wow, it's a... Uh, Wow, that's all I can say. Since the Lord has extended uh, the consecration past August, he said each one has been different from the last. Um, this month and uh, moving forward, the focus is on midwife birthing and pushing travail, stages of pregnancy and childbirth. Uh, and we know uh, it takes nine months for the gestation of a human fetus. Um, to be in its formation and processes and everything that's going to be put in its place before the actual uh, birthing um, comes forth. Nine, nine birthing, pushing, travail. Also nine um, symbolizes um, finality divine completeness, judgments, and fruits of the Spirit. And so, questions that the Lord had me to scribe Health of our wounds, closed or open, fruitful or barren, miscarriage or bring forth what are we carrying what are we or have we been pregnant with have we aborted our seed what have we been eating as nourishment for the seed we are carrying and still born are alive in uh I was like, wow, never really thought how much conception, pregnancy, carrying, and bringing forth entails. Never until I did some research, and it's a lot, right? It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I do have companion scriptures uh, to go with this, just like I did for the month of August when we talked about being willing to suffer wrong, to seek the Lord, to deny ourselves, to pick up our cross, and to Follow the Lord at all costs. Um, the health of our womb is extremely important because for some wombs, they do not have the strength to carry. Some wombs do not have the strength to conceive. So that is something to ponder during this month. So something to think about during these concluding months of 2024. 
Health of our wounds, closed or open, fruitful or barren, miscarriage or bring forth. What are we carrying? Have we aborted our seed? What have we been eating as nourishment for the seed we are carrying, stillborn or alive? We have Micah 4, 10, Genesis 35, 16, Isaiah 42, 12, and 66, 8. So, strength to carry and strength to conceive. Some people need surrogates. Uh, a lot of people are getting surrogates now because they just don't want to go through the act of childbirth some do it because they can't because they can't conceive and or they can't carry because they end up miscarrying so their wounds are not strong their wounds um, are not healthy and conducive for that purpose. So they pay someone or someone comes forth to assist them in that act of being able to carry the seed for them. So, so to God be the glory on that nugget on today. Our prayer, yeah, it is. Because, you know, we pray. Yeah, we do. Our prayer is going to be taken from Psalms 63, Psalms 141, 144, 145, and concluding with Psalms 91. And um, as I have stated last week, and I believe the week, before that, we are still in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel has 48 chapters. We are by no means done with Ezekiel. Uh, this week was, let's see, I did 38 to this morning. Uh, yeah, don't get me started. Okay, we started. Thirty two. Thirty two through thirty eight this week. So in the book of focus will be the chapter, I'm sorry, of focus will be chapter 34 today so that will be our chapter of focus so getting back to our prayer psalms 63 psalms 141 144 145 and concluding with 91 oh jesus thank you father thank you oh god thou art my god Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land. How many of you all can relate to this verse? Do you seek the Lord early? Does your third, does your third, does your <laughs> Lord Jesus does your soul thirst for the Lord does your flesh long for the Lord O oh God thou art my God early will I seek my soul thirsts 
for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. So then I ask you, what do you thirst for today? And what does your flesh long for? Because scripture says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. I'm making notes like I did last week because I'm talking to you, but the Lord's talking to us all. I'm not exempt. No way, no shape, no how. So that's found in Matthews 6, 21. Right? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew 12, 35 says, A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth evil things. So. Is your heart, is your treasure good or is your treasure evil? Mm. Father, help us on today. It's also found in Luke 6, 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks Lord help me on today I really, really do wonder what it is we, I don't have to understand. Holy Spirit asks, answered the question before I even asked it. Who it is and what it is we serve. And he said self. We serve ourselves. At the end of the day. Because if we truly, truly serve the Lord, we will want to do things that truly please Him. I'm not saying we won't make mistakes. I'm not saying we won't make mistakes. What I'm saying is, the intent of our heart will be pure. And the course of our walking daily in his precepts, judgments, and laws. That's all I'm saying. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in my name. So you're telling me we need to bless the Lord while we still have breath in our body. Because scripture says the dead cannot praise him. Mm. Right. Uh, 
Psalms 115, 17, the dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. Child, because people be claiming I, I'm in a spirit of error and uh, I'm not in the book. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, cause, you know, whatever. Because you ain't in the book. Don't mean nobody else ain't. Because your spirit is pricked and your conscience is convicting you about you. Don't mean that I'm doing you or anyone else that does contrary to you. <laughs> right? She's speaking error and uh, she's a, uh, uh, I'm just waiting for the, for, for the witch. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm sure it's being said in hearts of people, but it ain't been said to me verbally yet. But that's to be expected when you're dealing with carnal people. People who do the things after the flesh and because of that are not God according to Romans chapter 8. You do mind the things of the flesh. You, you are enemy, enmity with God and you're not of his. And the thing is, he's talking to the church. He's not talking to the heathen of the Gentile individuals that know nothing about him. He's talking to those that claim they know him. Anyway. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. There's never a time, a situation, or a season that we don't praise the Lord. Also, Romans 8. Weather and tribulations. God help us. When things are working for you, when things aren't working for you, when you when when when, when you got money, when you don't have money, when the sun's shining and when the sun's not shining, there's never a time when we're not supposed to praise the Lord. When you don't have food and when you have an overflow. Your praise should be consistent. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night, watch this, because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. Do we remember the thing the Lord has done for us? Troubles he's saved us out of things that we've put our own selves in and things at the hand of others. And do we remember his acts of salvation in our life at any time? given time do we remember lest we forget mm -hmm. <laughs> oh there's uh okay so deuteronomy 4 9 says only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Least thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and least thy depart from thine heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy son and thy son's sons. Deuteronomy 4.23 says, Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you and made 
you and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God has forbidden thee. So, Jesus. Deuteronomy 6.12, Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Least we forget. Right? Gosh. Psalms 50, 22. Now consider this, that ye forget God, that ye forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Slay them not, lest my people forget, scatter them by thy power and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. Lest, the, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the aff afflicted. So when we get in trouble with forgetting, we tend to go backwards when we forget. <sighs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm taking my time. I'm writing this down because this is good for me too. Father, Least we forget. So we got to remember. We got to remember what the Lord has done. Because thou has been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings, I will rejoice in my soul. Followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Who are we following? Today, are we following the next trend? Are we who are we following? For those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth, they shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speaketh, that, I'm sorry, speaks, that speak lies shall be stopped. Are you a speaker of lies? Does lies fill your, your heart? You devise lies upon the bed, Malachi 2. Last week I said Micah, but it was actually Malachi. I'm sorry. But Micah is what I really mean today to say Micah 2 1 that you devise iniquity upon your bed and when the morning is light you perform it did you devise evil intent and lies to get over on a person place or thing lord help me today because you will be stopped one way or another Oh, Psalm 41. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice. 
when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. <laughs> Keep the door. Pick up. The door of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing. To practice wicked works with men that work iniquity, and let me not eat their dainties. What? Let me go to Malachi really quick so I can quote that scripture correctly which is in the Old Testament woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds when the morning is light they practice it because it is in the power of their hands Hmm. Right, so that's Micah two, two verse, excuse me, one every time, horse and hiccups, it, um, amazing to me so then that that's a campaign a comp a companion campaign really <laughs> jesus a companion to this psalms 141 4 incline not mine heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity and let me not eat their deities let's not join hand hand joining hand i don't know how many times i have said that on this platform and proverbs 1121 though hand join in hand the wicked shall not be unpunished but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered that's proverbs 1121 and proverbs 16 5 says everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. And this month, Lord permitting, will be completing the teaching on is there any such thing as healthy pride and proud? The answer is absolutely not. Everyone, not some, not a few, but everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Don't be joining hands with people who have evil intentions in their heart. If you don't know, ask the Holy Spirit to show you. He will surely do so. You're coming in league and coming in alignment with people because they are familiar to you. They're a family member. They're a best, excuse me, a best friend, but they have evil intentions. then you become partakers in their calamity when punishment comes. 
I suggest you let go of that hand. <laughs> Seriously. And the scripture in the New Testament, which talks about don't be partakers of another man's sin. We're supposed to keep ourselves pure. Why is it so hard for saints to keep themselves pure? Lay hands certainly on no man, neither be partakers of another man's sin. Keep thyself pure. That is First Timothy 5.22. Don't do it. You don't. Especially when you don't know the whole story. Especially when you're only getting bits and pieces from the person telling you the story because they are intending not to tell on themselves and to spill the bean on what they did to either provoke or cause a situation or what their part was in the situation. No, it's all the other person. But if you have no clean eyes, discerning, discernment, you'll fall for people's mess every time I am telling you something I've experienced self. The Lord taught me a valuable lesson in not discerning people's story and the intent in which they're telling it. Hard lesson but grateful for it. You best believe I won't have to learn this one again. Most folk today, especially carnal, will not tell on themselves to make themselves look bad. Are you for real? They need to maintain the victim mentality and facade because they're the victim. They need to keep that up. God forbid they tell the truth on themselves. James 1 27 says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is, is this. What is it? To visit the fatherless and widow in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world why can't we keep ourselves unspotted by the world how they help us so psalms 141 4 is 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 something father help us today eating that dainties <laughs> lace with poison lace with iniquity but you laughing it up like hot this good. I can't get enough. <laughs> Sacrifice unto idols. You know, um, spiritually, we become our own idols. So you've sacrificed unto your own self and then you've given it to somebody else to pollute them. What? That's also in the book of Romans. Food sacrifice unto idols. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 
um, 18 through 21 and then 28. And I actually read that last week through um, um, as one of uh, um, communion uh, scriptures. But I'll let you read that on your time. One, uh, I will uh, point out verse 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Right? You better leave them people dainties alone. Especially when you know the intent in which it's been manufactured, being uh, cooked, being prepared. Better leave them people alone. You get some, some kind of scaby. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -mm -mm. Lord, help us on today. On air, hot flash, hot flash. We're still in prayer. Psalms 141, verse 5. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. When their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth, as when one cutteth and cle cleaveth wood upon the earth. But my eyes are unto thee, O Lord, and thee is my trust. Leave not thy servant destitute. Praise the name of the Lord. Keep me from the snares, the snares which they have laid for me, and the gins of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets. That's what I'm talking about. Well, alas. While I, whilst that I withal escape, let them fall by their own craftiness. But you be the one to escape because your hands and heart are clean. Right? We pray and hope so. Psalms 144. Whew, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war. You better tell him. And my fingers uh, to fight. What? Sometimes it's the time for work. I, 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 I say that I will always come in peace. But best believe. I am always prepared for war. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdues my people under me. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him and are the son of man that thou makest account of him? Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that pass, passes away. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. Send thine hand from above. Ride me. And deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children. I'm sorry, rid me. <laughs> Ain't no E there. Father, help. I'm special. 
<laughs> whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. What you talking about? Whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. What? is falsehood. Shall we look that up on today? I didn't do that today. Huh. What is falsehood? A lie, an untrue assertion, want of truth, meaning lack of truth, want of honesty, treachery, deceitfulness, counterfeit, false appearance, and posture. That's what falsehood means. Again, I am using the King James Version, the King James Bible Dictionary. I believe I showed you that uh, last week. And here is the definition. You can see it yourself. No reason to lie to you and make up words. Uh, good Lord. Truth hurts. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, un, upon a palstry and an instrument of ten strings, will I sing praises unto thee. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of false could. Wow. Wow, Lord. Deliver and rid us from strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity lies. And their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. What does the Amplify say to Psalms 144.11? Let's find out. Rescue me and deliver me out of the power of hostile alien tribes whose who mouth speaks deceit and whose right hand or right hand raised and taken fraudulent oaths. <laughs> fraudulent. Wow, well, fraudulent. Whoa. Father help. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. That our gardeners may be full, affording all manner of stores. That our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets. That our oxen may be strong to labor. That there be no breaking in nor going out. That there would be no complaining in our, <laughs> our streets. What you talking about?
complaining. <laughs> Stop. Happy is that people that is in such case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. That's what I'm talking about today. What you say. <laughs> I think I'm just going to do Psalms 91. Let's just do that and not do Psalms 145. We will probably do that another time. Wow, wow, wow. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. I didn't say to trust in Lucy and Susie and Mickey and Mike. But to trust in God. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth, not yours, shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that waiteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not deny thee only with thine eyes. So thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague deny thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. That's what I'm talking about. The young lion and the dragon. Shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Okay, Lord. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. Wanted me to read Romans chapter 8. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Um, King James Version. This is still on. Is that really doing? Oh, Lord, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. For the righteousness of the law that, I'm sorry, Verse four, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed, neither indeed can be. 
For then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, which is a capital S. If so, be that the spirit, capital S, of God dwell in you. But if so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. So this is if he dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit, capital S, of Christ, he is none of his. So you could be professing Christendom and salvation all you want to, but if you don't have his spirit in you, there's that another debunking of once saved, always saved. If you don't have his spirit, you don't belong to him. I know that contradicts a lot of y'all's theology, and it, it, it is it is an insult to your theology and to Christendom. But if you don't have, it ain't my word, it's his. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. And I'm not taking it out of context. I will read it in the Amplified as well. You don't belong to him. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Actually, I'm going to start. I'm, gonna, I'm reading from the Amplified now. Romans 8, I'm going to read 1 through 9, because that's where I stopped in the King James Version. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no judging guilty of wrong of those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the spirit. And then the scripture, the companion scripture they give for that is John 3, 18, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being has freed me from the law of sin and death. Verse 3. For God has done what the law could not do. It's power being weakened by the flesh, the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit, sending his own son in the guise of sinful flesh. And as an offering for sin, God condemned sin in the flesh, subdued, overcame, deprived it of its power over all who accepts that sacrifice. That's a mouthful. I'm going to read that again. For God has done what the law could not do. It's power being weakened by the flesh, the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit. Some time ago, I believe it was either June or July, it was July, where I had asked the question if the Holy Spirit was dwelling in you or is he just operating upon you? Because a lot of us are confused about that. It can feel like he's in you when he's operating from outside. That don't mean he in you. 
But when he's in you, there's a change of nature and character. Versus him trying to convey a way for you to go and ought to go. Sending his own son in the guise of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin, God condemned, condemned sin in the flesh, subdued it, overcame it, deprived it of its power over all who accepts the sacrifice. So that means that's what makes a true Christian. You accepting the work that the sacrifice produced on that cross. Subduing it, overcoming it, depriving it of power, your flesh. Whether, give the flesh what it, what it doesn't want. Truth, who's truth? Jesus. Give the flesh what it don't want. When the flesh wants you to do something, tell it no. The flesh don't like that. The more you do it, the more apt you are to continue. It becomes a lifestyle. You deprive the flesh of its power when you accept the sacrifice of the cross. What it did, what the purpose of it was to condemn sin in the flesh with the perfect sacrifice, which was and is Jesus. He accomplished that. So now we got the Holy Spirit who's supposed to be indwelling in us. Uh, not on the outside only, but inside. To continue to subdue and deprive the flesh of its power. But you can't do that if you don't have him. So therefore you give in to your flesh 1,000% of the time because you don't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We're still in prayer. Do you understand why you keep cursing? And why you keep fornicating? And why you keep drinking? And why you keep touching things you ain't supposed to or watching things you're not supposed to because you need the Holy Spirit in you, which is the peeping power. The companion Scripture to verse 3 is Leviticus 737. Verse 4, so that the righteous and just requirements of the law might be fulfilled, met in us who live and move not in the ways of the flesh, but in the ways of the spirit. Our lives governed not by the standards. And according to the dictates of the flesh, but controlled by the Holy Spirit. That's the problem. Excuse me. Most of us have a, we don't want to be controlled by anything other than ourselves. But I'm a Christian with your false carnal self. Only in name. But not in spirit and not in truth. You have a title, sweetheart. But not the character, nature, and ways of a believer in Jesus Christ. It's not church as usual. Repent with godly sorrow and get. Back on track. Ask the Lord to baptize you, fill you with his Holy Spirit in fire.
Lord, help us on today. So you're either controlled by your flesh or you're controlled by the Holy Spirit. Verse five, for those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its, wow, unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. That is self-explanatory. But those who are according to the spirit, capital S, and are controlled by the desires of the spirit, capital S, set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. I don't need to break that down because that's self-explanatory. I'm going to read it again now. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by, the, by its unholy desires, sets their minds on and pursues those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit and are controlled by the desires of the spirit set their minds on and seek things, seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. I don't care what you say. Your fruit will tell me who and what you are 1,000% of the time. Say what you want, perform, perform, do you boo. But at the end of the day, you gonna tell on you. Your fruit will expose who and what you really are. So like I said, it's not, not judgment, it's fruit examination. Verse 7, that is because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purposes is hostile to God. For it does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it can not. Wow. So then those who are living the life of the flesh, catering to the appetites and impulses of, it, of their carnal nature cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to him. You want me to stop at nine? Understood, Holy Spirit. Verse 9, but you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit of God really <laughs> dwells within you, directs and controls you. But if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He does not belong to Christ. He is not truly a child of God. The companion scriptures 8, Romans 8, 14. That's Bible, not me. Be mad at me because you can see me. You can't see God with your natural eyes. Do, do you, boo? Do you? Do you? Because at the end of the day, that's what you're going to do anyway. 1,000% of the time, I say that people are always going to do what's in them to do. 1,000% of the time. If it's going to be Christ, it's going to be Christ. If it ain't going to be Christ, it's not going to be Christ. So 
opposite of serving Christ is the flesh. So you're going to serve your flesh or you're going to serve the Lord. Can't have it both ways. Purposes of these gatherings. Holy Spirit. To provoke, to stir up, to expose, to renew, to reprove, to resuscitate, to restore, to bring edification, to bring exhortation, to bring correction, to rebuke, to build and rebuild, to destroy and tear down, for training, for equipping, for sharpening, for demonstrating the love of Christ, however that looks for accuracy, for godly separation when it's needed, for deliverance, for spiritual and natural growth, for setting godly order, for spiritual and natural development, not providing an environment for fostering and incubating excuses, for sifting the wheat from the chaff, for acceleration, for renouncing and closing all demonic doorways, for encouragement, to provide a place for healthy external and internal healing, for forgiving from our hearts and the fruits of that are letting go to loose, to release those that have wronged us, hurt us, abandoned us, betrayed us, and slandered us, allowing manifestations good and bad in dealing with them when they have been revealed and exposed. For exhibiting authentic Christian living for testing to allow the deuterous power of the Holy Ghost to be manifested in us, around us, and upon us, to operate in the signs and wonders produced by the Holy Spirit, becoming intimate within and within in the truth, which is Jesus, for activation to walk in kingdom mindset and operation, to challenge mindsets and traditions that offend the Lord, to allow the shaking of our foundation for accountability, for reigniting the fire for kingdom purpose and our first love, to identify and tear down demonic strongholds for spiritual house cleaning and maintenance, for transparency, for pushing and birthing, being spiritual midwives, for conviction, for returning honor and fear back to God, to identify compromised postures and behaviors of complacency that causes us to become comfortable and at ease, lazy, for adjusting our focus back to and on the things of the Lord, for bringing awareness of our minds concerning the ways, patterns, and habits of our thinking that do not please the Lord. Reprogramming of our muscle memory from the old man to the new man in Christ, which is conversion. Living in accepting the call and responsibilities of being a Christian instead of just wanting and walking in the title of being a Christian, which is having a form of godliness, for fruit examination, which is not judgment, to promote self daily examination, to study the word, becoming hearers and doers of the word, to be ready at all times, to be a people and children of obedience to accept, submit, yield, surrender, and not despise discipline, chastening of the Lord in whatever form it comes. To be applicators and replicators of Christ in his nature, his character, his word, and his ways. Development of godly discipline in our walk. Being examples worthy to be followed. Sorry about that, people. My ring light just went out. 
I need to keep an eye on this too, because this will be actually I'm going to change this out. Go ahead and change it. To be applicators and replicators of Christ in his nature, his character, his word, his ways. Development of godly discipline in our walk of life. Being examples worthy to be followed. Living and exhibiting truth, which is Jesus. To be creative. To revive and for resurgence, for protection, for preservation, to cover, to restore covenant, to be a people of active faith, to adhere to sound doctrine, and to be fruitful. Those are the purposes of why the Lord has established this gathering. And because it's not church as usual, where you were able to skirt by and just get by and just do the bare minimum and, and uh, just do what was reasonable, he's moving you. He's moving you. I want to read a couple of scriptures before we partake into our chief chapter in Ezekiel on today. Jeremiah, some things I came across. Jeremiah 16, 17 says, For mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my faith. Neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. So those of you who think your secret closet is so secret it's not that your dungeons and your locked up basement and your soundproof walls with pads the man can't see the man can't spy but guess what god ain't no man he most certainly sees for mine eyes are upon all, not some, not a few, their ways. They are not hid from my face. So every time you turn on that pornography and you act out in that pornography, the Lord sees you every time. You're on your marriage bed and you perform acts that homosexuals commit because you think you married. You've just defiled the marriage bed with acts. He don't like two same sex doing. What makes you think he wants the opposite sex doing? But your pastor told you it's okay because you're married. Mm -hmm. it's not okay going through the back door ain't okay repent with godly sorrow if that be you if you're having fantasies with being with underage children and you are an adult Seek help. Because that's not God. And you're preaching and you're teaching other people. And you're dealing with this secret situation. I suggest you find 
If you're a man, find a brother stronger than you. Don't get nobody just as weak as you. Because you're two blind men going about to fall into the ditch. So get someone stronger, spiritually stronger than you. And been that way for quite some time. Not a newly strong person. I'm not saying nothing wrong with it, but I'm just saying somebody that has had some spiritual stamina can help and walk you through some things. Mm -hmm. Matthew 15, 14 and Luke 6, 19 talks about, can a blind person lead a blind? They both gonna fall into a ditch. I'm in the word. I'm in the word. So neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. Second Chronicles 7 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall Humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then, the Lord says, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will hear their land. Wow. So you want to be a recipient of having your sins being forgiven. There are one, two, three, four things you must do if you're his, of course. If my people which are called by my name. Shall humble themselves. We got an issue with pride in the body of Christ. And pray. We talked about prayer and pray last week. Conversing, that's prayer. Conversing with God. Having an intimate conversation with him. Prayer. Pray is supplicating, asking. It's more of a one-sided thing. Prayer is two-sided. He's talking, you talking, you talking, he's talking. So you must humble yourself. You must pray and then you must seek him. We got a problem with that. And that was one of the things, uh, uh, points of um, consideration of last month's consecration, seeking the Lord. Seek what? His face. And then we got to do something else. Repentance, turn from their wicked way. We fail to turn. We can do one, two, and three and forget four. We could do one and three and forget two and four. But at the end of the day, we usually forget four. Thinking we've met all the requirements. We need to confess our sins for he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But if we are not confessing, First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we got to do something. And turn from their wicked ways. Then he will hear from heaven. He will forgive their sin and heal their land. We don't do things by the Bible. 
That's why we don't see manifestations of the word of the Lord, because we don't do things by the word of the Lord, because we are constant deviators. Deviations are just disobedience. We constantly deviate. We constantly want to put our own spin. We want to do it our way because it's easier. It's best. I don't want to go um, and follow the whole script. Then you won't get the whole outcome. Hmm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And one more. James 3, 10, 11, and 12. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Doth a fountain send forth out the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Fruit examination, yo. Either a vine, frigs. So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh? Words contradiction yourself. Fruit examine nation, not judgment. So at the end of the day, your fruit will tell on you, like I said earlier. In case you thought I wasn't in the book. <laughs> I love uh, how the Lord confirms what he says to me um, audibly with his written word. That is mm, uh, an honor. I'm telling you, I'm, 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 I don't take it lightly. I don't um, want to abuse it. I marvel at it, to be honest. Uh, to you, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a pleasure for the Lord to be able to share his heart with me because he doesn't have to, right? So, um, I don't take it lightly and I don't abuse it and I, uh, don't want to, what's the word I'm looking for? Take it for granted. Because he can shut that fountain up real quick. All right. So our chapter in the book of Ezekiel is chapter 34. And um, government to be replaced is the title of this chapter and i'm going to read this and the word of the lord came unto me saying sure seems like the lord's talking to ezekiel a lot just saying <laughs> he's got a lot to say still do sorry just moved that little lord still got a lot to say he haven't he hasn't stopped having a lot of time. People talking about he don't talk to boy. He just don't talk to you. <laughs> you better get right with Jesus. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do not that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? question. Ye eat the fat and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The disease have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick. 
Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. And ye were, and they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field. When they were scattered, my sheep wandered through the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek. After them, I moved because this is prevalent today in modern church houses. I'm going to continue reading. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 7, verse 8, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my sheep at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding my flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth. And they may not be meat for them. 11. For thus saith the Lord God, behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and I will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. Are you guilty, pastors, of driving away God's people from his house because you keep taking and not giving? I will bind up that which was broken. I will strengthen that which was sick. 
but I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. You know, when I read this part, what came to my mind immediately was those that preach and teach the prosperity gospel. Those that have gotten fat and wealthy off of the poor of God's people, the sick and broken, who they've leached from and not made whole and well and healed, but you kept saying, give me and give me and you'll be blessed and give me and taking scripture out of context to line their pockets. Scripture says you fed yourself but did not feed his flock. You started out well. What caused your deviation? Galatians 5, 7 says, ye did run well. What did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Where did you deviate that you started changing and distorting biblical revelation? That you decided to twist and manipulate the word to bring about deceitful riches, deceitful gain. Because you didn't go about it in truth. You sought the riches instead of kingdom first but you started out well first matthew 6 33 we're supposed to seek first his kingdom other things will be added but you wanted to make things happen for you because god's way was taken too long What cause? Where did you deviate, sir? Where did you deviate, ma'am? The Jew stopped obeying the truth of his word. And who's the truth? Jesus. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man will come unto my father except by me. What caused your deviation? You started out in truth, but you deviated somewhere. You, 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 your eyes got locked on something, someone in some place, and you just went after it instead of following after Christ. The Lord says, but I will destroy the fat and the strong. In verse 16, I will feed them with judgment. So you have your 
reward here. Sir and ma'am. You have your reward. Matthew 6, 1, take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. I, 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 if riches increase, set not your heart upon them. I believe that is in Psalms. It's Psalm 62 10 it says, Trust not in oppression, oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Psalm 72 12 says, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Proverbs 22 16. Excuse me. He that oppresses the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. In the rest of Matthew's sorry. 6 1 6 2 says, Therefore, when thou doest thine arm, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And you, um, Celebrity Christians, you piggyback off of each other, you preach at each other's churches, and you, you give this amount of um, honorarium and this amount of honorarium, and keeping each other's flow of riches rich. Verse 3 says of Matthew 6, But when thou doest arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine arms may be in secret. Verse 4. And thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. But we don't want to wait for the Lord. We want to do it ourselves with our own intellect, skill, and gifts, and talents. Woe unto you, for the Lord is against you. Oh, and as for you, O oh my flock, 
Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. That was a question. That's why I changed the way I was read it, reading it, because it was a question. And have, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must file the residue with your feet? Another question. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden upon your feet, and they drink that which they have fouled with their, with your feet. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. God, verse 20, unto them, behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle, because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder, and pushed with all the diseased with your horns, till ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore will I save my flock and they shall no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. Thank you, Lord, for bringing an end to those men and women, beast in the spirit that love to devour the weak and the lowly who who may be naive in their mind and very subtle and pliable and will believe everything. That will come along and see the injured and instead of bringing healing, well, I'm going to take advantage of your weakness and weak state in the spirit. And instead of being a bomb of healing salve, to you, I'm going to make your sore bigger, worse, and cause more of an infection and make it poop putrid. The beast, the beast that prey on the weak in the body of Christ, the beast. Y'all coming to an end too, along with the shepherds. That didn't shepherd the beast. Red flags. If your leader is too concerned about how they look, and what they drive, and where they live, versus making sure your lights don't get cut off. And that you're able to feed your six children because your spouse left you, whether you're a man or a woman. Or help you pay a medical bill because you've lost your job and now you can't afford to get your medication and you need to see a doctor. Or because you're laid up in a hospital. And don't nobody come visit you or a regular to see to your well-being. But they want your tithe. They want your offering so they can tear down barns and build bigger barns. So my name can be magnified in this region. Ah, 
the Lord is against you, sir. And against you, ma'am. And the beasts that take advantage of prey, of the broken, of the sick, of the diseased, of the weak. The edible, yes, Holy Ghost. You're going to be replaced, sir and ma'am, with a faithful shepherd and prince chosen by the Lord that will do what you failed to do. And then you'll be one of the ones if you don't repent, saying in that day, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name? And, and did we not do all this in your name? He's going to reply to you. Get away from me. You who worked iniquity. I never knew you. You ended up being a vessel unto dishonor. Let me tell you about a vessel unto dishonor. Vessels unto dishonor, when they have been used for their purpose, are destroyed, are cited for destruction after their purpose has been fulfilled. Is that you? Romans chapter 9. Mm -hmm. You talked about Pharaoh. He was a vessel unto honor. Why? To show how big God. And side note, thank you all. I want to encourage some of you with something the Lord is currently encouraging me with and in. Mm. I'm struggling with some things. I had noticed that a person that was in my sphere of influence would constantly um, demand things. With, I'm going to need you to do this and I'm going to need you to do that instead of asking me. And when I was learning them, I thought, oh, they're not asking. They're just telling because of who they think they are to me and who they perceive I am to them. So they think they can just demand instead of asking. So then I started noticing someone else doing the exact same thing. I'm going to need you to do this for me. And I'm going to need you to do this. They didn't do it in the wrong way. It was, you know, nice. But I know I said, I said to the second person, I don't like that you're demanding things from me. I am an adult and I would appreciate you asking me to do something for you and not demand it. And let me, show, let me, let me just say, because so, the Lord is so good and so merciful and gracious. He turned that searchlight back on me and started showing me how I was doing the exact same thing. I was demanding instead of asking. And when he showed me that, I said, yes, Holy Spirit. Thank you for making me aware of what I was doing as well. So then every time I catch myself in the middle about to demand, I turn it around and, and to make it an act. With a please and thank you. Can you do this for me? Please and thank you. Not, I'm going to need you to do this for me. Mm, I'm not your child. And you're not mine. You deserve respect and so do I. So I want to encourage you to be mindful of when you have an issue with an individual 
just know the Lord just might turn that light back on you to show you you. And when he does, please don't deny and lie. Just get it right. Right? Because he's not doing it to hurt your little sensitive feelings. He's doing it so that uh, we all would be um, right and not offensive to one another. So there was something I wanted to share with you that the Holy Spirit just lovingly, oh boy, am I so honored by that and humbled. So yes, you can say that, but let me show you your actions. And that's what he did. And what he did, I apologized. I repented to him and I went to my, my husband and said, babe, I'm sorry. I should ask you not demand. See, I wanted you to do something, but I got to make sure I'm not, I'm falling in line as well. Right? So when I find I'm breaking that muscle memory of demanding and exchanging it for asking. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, at least I forget. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. He wanted me to do that. And so I did not want to forget in doing that. Mm. So all you beasts out there. Yeah, I'm back on track. Lord's coming for you. You have taken your last victim for the last time. God's people are not prey. Nor are we a piggy bank. Let me say that again. God's people are not, are not prey. And they're not your piggy bank. We're people. I'm going to read 25 again. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sheep in the woods. And I will make them and the place round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the showers to come down in his season. And there shall be showers of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit and the earth shall yield her increase and they shall be safe in their land and shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke and deliver them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. Those you've made your little slaves, but you want to add a title. Nurse, this guild, this guild, that guild. You, you get free cleaning, free maintenance. You sap the strength hope out of God's people. In one of the chapters in Ezekiel, the Lord spoke to the female prophetess, prophets, and said, you've made my people sad, who I have not made sad. The Lord's coming for you. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beasts of the land devour them. But they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the field, neither bear the shame of the heathen any more. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them. Jesus. 
and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. And I am your God, saith the Lord. It's not church as usual. People are being removed. People are being replaced. Judgment is being pronounced. And some are even going and have and will lose their life because of what they have done to God's house, God's word, God's law, and God's people. Will that be you? Companion scriptures for verse 1 through 4, Jeremiah chapter 2, 3, 10, 12, 17, 22, 23. Dealing with the pastors. Ephesians 4, 11, Matthew 25, 31 through 46, James 5, 14 and 6. Red flags to look for. Words to ponder, words, woe, against, shepherd, feed, fat, fatling, wool. Oh boy, y'all know how to dress. Y'all got the most name brand uh, uh, clothing, footwear, eyeglass wear, uh, accessory wear, jewelry. Head to toe, you're looking fine, sir. Looking fine, ma'am. You got your reward. Strengthened, diseased, weak, healed, sick, bound, broken, brought, driven, away, lost, salt, ruled. You've, you, you've caused people to leave the church because of your actions. And then he said, but with force and with cruelty, you ruled God's people wow that's verse four with force and cruelty causing people to leave the church you hurt people with your actions you've hurt people you have hurt people and you think you're going on to depths not so sir not so ma'am <laughs> okay lord use something okay uh yeah and so we did read that I'm finding it. Jeremiah 16, 17, his eyes are all our way. And 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 they and we are not hid from his face, neither is his iniquities, neither are our iniquities hid from his eyes. He sees what you do, he sees what you do, he sees the intent of your heart. How you take advantage of God's people. You're going to give an account for it, sir. You're going to give an account for it, ma'am. With force and cruelty, you rule God's people. For verse 5 and 6, the companion scripture is Matthew 9, 26. Words uh, for pondering is sheep, scattered, covered, protect, beast, field, meat, Harm, devour, wander. Verse 7 through 10. Words to ponder is pray, require, charge, move, leading, deliver. Verse 11 through 16. 
The companion scripture is Luke 19, 10. Words for reflection are pondering, search, seek, dark, restore, destroy. Verse 23. The companion scriptures is Ezekiel 37, 24. John 10, 14 through 18. 1 Kings 22, 17. Numbers 27, 17. 1 Samuel 17, 38 to 40, 28, 20, 15, and 11. Yes. Verses 25 through 27, uh, words for pondering and reflection is covenant, peace, evil, cease, safe, sleep, bless, Fruitful, yoke, slave, seasons, yield, increase, break, bars. At the end of the day, the Lord knows what's in our hearts. He knows the intent of our heart. We're going to have to get it right. So if you still have breath in your body and you have not, been left by his spirits and given the mark of Ichabod. There is still repentance for you if you repent with godly sorrow. If you repent with godly sorrow. Yeah, you heard what I said. If the spirit hasn't left you and marked you with Ichabod, you heard what I said. To God be the glory. I pray. I know this word wasn't for everyone. It's for a select few who has ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying in this hour. If you have any prayer requests, questions, or concerns, you can email at the lord's gathering 11 at 2023 at gmail.com or you can leave a comment in the uh, you can leave a message in the comment section i love you guys i love the lord more and one thing i will not do is Not to give you what the Lord has charged me to give you. I have to obey like you have to obey. I have an assignment like we all have an assignment. Whether or not you choose to do what you're assigned to do or not, that's your business. I can't make you. I can't make you do what you're supposed to do in the kingdom of the Lord. You got to want to. You got to long for him. As we read in Psalms 63, 141 and 144. You got to want them. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. Then a dry and thirsty land. So, until next time. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, get your house in order because it is not church as usual. And if you leave this earth without getting your house in order, it is not the Lord's doing where you end up. It's yours. Be fruitful. Be multiply. In Jesus' name. I